Nine Plus Us presents the Baseball Together podcast with your hosts, Blackjack Brad and Kansas City Little Big Briggy Blue Eyes. And now, Baseball Together. Welcome to the Baseball Together podcast, baseball family, and we are bringing you the very first video episode of the podcast. I'm here with Brad, as always. As always, I'm here and I'm on video. Unbelievable. (laughs) It's unbelievable. This is the podcast uh, video segment you didn't know you wanted or needed, but now it's here, so be excited. That's right. You didn't know you needed it, but now you've got it, and you should be happy. You're welcome. (laughs) Today, we got a big lineup for you. We're going to talk about some signings. Uh, we're going to talk about Los Angeles doing some being crazy. Got some shenanigans going on down there. Then we're going to take a break and talk about some Hall of Fame stuff, um, both this year and next year. So, right. yep. Brad, yeah. what do you think about Marcelo Zuna going to Atlanta? Uh, I think that's a great sign. That he's, I mean, he's a great player. He's very, very good. Um, I think that's for sure a great spot for him. That's a bat that they needed, and that's a question that we posed. What was it last week? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Like, what are we? What are they going to do without Donaldson's bat? And I think they found it. I um, think you're right. So he's going to be a great addition to the middle of that lineup. I mean, it's it's going to be tough to get through with him in there. And if they uh, ever need to bring King Felix up from the minor leagues. Yeah, and and that's the thing. I saw that, and I was I was a little bit concerned for the Braves on on that part. I mean, I'm sure it was probably the only deal that he got as far as getting a um, a minor league deal, because uh, he was not real happy when he got moved to the bullpen a couple years ago. Yeah, he was saying, you know, I'm a starter. I'm not a bullpen guy. He was there for about a week. Uh, Paxton got hurt, and then he had to come in again. But oh man, if he doesn't make the opening day roster, I don't know. I don't know where he's going to go from there. To be honest. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he's just if he decided to call it quits at that point if he doesn't make the opening day big league roster. It's possible, or do you think he'll hang out in AAA and wait? Because if Atlanta has shown us anything, it's that their potential to make a postseason run is is I think they've kind of primed it this for this year. Yeah, and he could he could <clears throat> stick it out just to make finally finally get to play in the postseason. Um, yeah, but I don't know I don't know what his what his mentality is there and uh, kind of what his uh, his approach is going to be. But, I mean, now, if if his one goal is to pitch in the postseason or be on a postseason roster, then that's that's it. That's the place right there. Yeah, that's that's the place to be. And so, but you're a Felix Hernandez fan. I am. I'm a huge Felix fan, yeah. So what, so what does this mean for you? I mean, obviously, he stayed in the National League. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, so... I mean, for me, like, his last start last year, it was kind of like everybody knew he wasn't coming back. It was the end of his contract. Um, yeah. He was going to demand more than what the what the Mariners were willing to pay. And they, the Mariners have a bunch of guys they're going to be bringing up in his place. I mean, they, they've got a good farm system as far as pitchers go. They've got a lot of arms down there. And they're not going to let him take up a roster spot as a legacy, basically, Um to keep those guys down in triple a because a lot of them are going to be coming up this year. Yeah, that's a good point. So, so I'm fine with it. Um, I'm actually glad that he went to the Braves out of all places because that's kind of one of my, one of, I guess that's a place that I've always liked. We've talked about that before, you know, growing up watching TBS, uh, you get to watch the Braves every day. So, so I'm happy he went there. It'll, it'll be weird to see him in a different uniform if he does end up on the big league roster, but I don't know. We'll be fine. Well, if he ends up at the big league roster here in Atlanta, I'm not in Atlanta, but I'm close. You might right. have to fly out. I might, yeah. I've never, I've never gotten to go to the King's Court. Never got to go to the King's Court before, so I might have yeah. to. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be. That'd be great. So then, L.A. City, the L.A. City Council specifically, mm-hmm. they announced um, that they are going to take action of some kind <laughs> to award the Dodgers the World <laughs> Series title from 2017. Well, it was an it was a unanimous vote, Brig. So well, I know, but I mean, what are they going to do? They <laughs> they said they're going to take action. What does that mean? I don't know what it means. I don't know if it's like put a petition on uh on the commissioner's desk to say this is what you need to do. 
This is what needs to That's... happen for justice to reign. Justice. I. <laughs> but then the Manfred, Rob Manfred comes out and he says it's not going to happen. And I think that, I mean, it wasn't going to happen anyway. You know. Yeah. Right. Right. But I think yeah. the fact that this was like put out there and something that that they wanted. It just made him do it faster and more aggressively. You know, like, okay, yeah, all right, let's put this hand, to bed yeah. right now. Put it to rest. This is not going to happen. <laughs> right. Uh, when you texted me this news, because you're the one that broke it to me, uh-huh. uh, you said, that's not how this works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I sent that. I sent him that gif from, I don't remember what kind of commercial it was, but that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. <laughs> Yeah, none of this. I was dying. It was so funny. (laughs) It's the perfect response. (laughs) So I'm sorry to all the L.A. fans out there who are hoping to see some movement on this, but that's not how this works. Yeah, you're you're actually going to have to earn that World Series title. And I think it'll come this – I think that's another one that's going to come this decade. But uh, but it's not going to come at the hands of, uh, I guess, the action of a vacation. So, sorry. Yeah, it (laughs) won't be city council. Yeah. (laughs) So now they're talking about moving robotic and robot umpires into the spring training this year. Mm-hmm. And I know we've talked a lot about robot umpires and kind of expressed our opinions on how we feel and, uh, you know, but right. what do you, th- what do you think? I mean, the news says that the umpires union are, are saying no way. So here's the thing. So, I'm going to be at a few spring training games, right? So I'm going to get right, to see yeah. it in action, see how it works, and see what I actually what I think about it. Um, I think spring training, if you're going to experiment with something, do it in spring training. You know, they, they did it in the Atlantic League. We talked about that. They did that last season. Yeah. Um, but, but why not mess with stuff during spring training, you know? Like, you can mess with, you can, like, put a pitch clock in place if you want to during spring training. Nobody cares. Sure, yeah. Because nobody's totally. taking it seriously. Yeah. I found that the teams who do take it seriously and do well during spring training do horribly during the season. So horribly, like every time. Yeah, take it from. Totally. I mean, the Mariners. I feel like are contenders for winning the Cactus League every single year, and whatever they do, it results in a terrible season. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if your team's doing well Is during because, spring training, is that because they're showing them their cards? I don't know, or maybe they just are they're peaking too early, putting putting uh too much effort into yeah into whatever and they get tired. I don't know what it is, but if your team's doing well during spring training, uh don't count on them doing well during the season. <laughs> That's pretty much <laughs> what I'm saying. But Yeah, no doubt. But yeah, I mean like I said, I think it's a perfect place to do it and what I'll get to see it firsthand and I will report on it. I'll let you guys know what I think about it. What do you think about uh these robo umps? "Quote unquote robo umps in uh, spring training." <laughs> I think I, I agree with you. I think it's the perfect place to put it. If you're going to do it, you have to do it in spring training. And the only way to get any real time feedback and any traction on the idea is to have it at a major league level. So, mm-hmm. so we need to see it up against you know we th- that stage. I guess is the best way to put it. And so that that's what I think. I think that if you're going to do it. Do it in spring training and then kick the data around, toy with the idea, get the player feedback, get some manager feedback and and move on from there. I'm not saying instate it or don't, just move on from there. Right. And keep in mind when we talk about robo umps, it's not there's not gonna be some kind of scaffolding in the shape of a yeah. person behind home plate with an iPad at the top. Yeah. You know, with the display that comes up, what it's gonna we're still gonna have an actual physical person, human umpire behind home plate, with you know an earpiece, kind of like what I've got right here, pretty much, yeah, uh, something like that. And there will be some, uh, pro- what like a fifth umpire up in the box somewhere, who's reading, so. who's reading, you know, the actual readout of what the pitch is, and and then relaying that message to the umpire. And it happens so fast, you probably won't even notice it. To be honest, because yeah. those readings come really fast. The clips we saw from from the minor league system this last year were actually really promising. Yeah, and I th- I think it'll work out great. I mean, I've heard concerns about the three D strike zone, but you've also seen on broadcast. I think it's I can't remember if it's ESPN or Fox who does it. Uh, they show yeah. the three D strike zone, so it it accounts for the depth of the plate in yep. that strike zone. So yeah, it totally does. I think it'll be interesting, and I think. That uh, do you think the umpires are worried about job security, or is it a stuck in the mud, like stick in the mud thing, where they're worried about this is the way it's always been, 
What do you think the actual concern is that the umpires have? I think it's uh I think it's partially uh the way it's always been, you know, the human mm-hmm. element. But I also think it's I think it's just a, an ego thing or like a reputation thing. Yeah. Because they don't I mean, we already know when they miss calls. I don't know what their big deal is, but I'm sure that it's like, "Oh, I don't need a robot doing my job. I can do it my, myself." Well, yeah, you can do every yeah. other aspect of your job yourself, but this is just something to help you out. Make it a little bit easier on you. That's one less thing to worry about as a home plate umpire. Well, that's a good argument, and that's absolutely true. I mean, not to mention all the other things they have to worry about, which is a lot. It's a whole lot, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I mean, I know this is nothing compared to being a a major league umpire, but I umpired, um, intramural softball for a season. Oh, yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. The big time. And, and got to the show, baby. I did. (laughs) That's right. Yep. (laughs) Made it to the show, uh, wearing my (laughs) basketball shorts and my orange shirt. Um, yeah, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> but <laughs> but no, I uh, I hated being the home plate umpire because a I didn't want to call balls and strikes, you know, front shoulder to back knee, whatever that is in softball, and right. I didn't want to be the one who was like I knew all the rules and everything, but those fields were all weird, and I was like I don't want to have to deal with the ground rules. That's a lot. <laughs> Just yep. put me out in the field, and I can call safer out, and that'll be the end of it. That's fine. Yeah, a little fair ball here and there, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly right. Yeah, it makes sense. So what do you think about the Mets signing Luis Rojas to replace Carlos Beltran? You know, there's quite a bit to that. Um, mm-hmm. He's only on a two-year deal. It's not like they signed him long-term to even three or five or whatever year, year deal. Um, he's obviously not the guy they initially wanted. And he was not the second guy they wanted. So right. they they brought in an <laughs> internal hire because I guess I, I heard I, I heard there were kind of murmurings within within the, the Mets clubhouse already like among the players. Oh. About having somebody come in who was part of a sign stealing scandal. That's part of the reason Beltran got fired. Right. Yep. And that's part of the reason they went with somebody internal because they know they know Rojas is clean, and you know we know that he comes from baseball stock. He's Felipe Alou's son. Yep. Um. So he's raised in baseball. He knows the sport. But at the same time, do you know what his job was before he got hired? Wasn't he a bench coach or or not a bench coach, a hitting coach? No, I think he was like quality assurance or something like that. Oh, seriously? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. So <laughs> it'll be oh, interesting wow. to see what happens. Um, and here's the thing. I, I heard this on David Sampson's podcast today. It's nothing personal. He said yeah. they gave him a two-year deal because he's not going to go past that second year. But the, the only reason they didn't give him a one-year deal is because players don't like to play for a lame duck coach. Yeah, yeah, totally. So if he makes it past well, this year, he'll be doing well, but he's not going to make it past that second one. Okay, but is he going to even be the leader? That's my question because – with a two-year deal, he's the second youngest manager in Major League Baseball history, by the yeah. way. Yeah. So it's we're, I mean, it's, it's like who's going to lead the team? Who's actually going to take charge? And now that Todd's father, Todd Frazier, is not there, uh-huh. um, I'm wondering, do they have enough senior leadership on the team to actually run, you know, the campaign? And I don't, I don't know. But the Mets make some weird decisions, man. Like they do. every time I turn around, they make weird decisions. And this is the thing with that is their GM right now is a former agent. And I think we've I think we've seen the model now that it's yeah. not a good idea to have an agent run your team because it, it wasn't working for the Lakers for a while. And you know, yeah. it, it may have been Magic Johnson. Uh it might be Rob Palinka. I don't know, but it doesn't seem like it's a good idea to get an agent in your front office. Yeah. So that's yeah, it's, it's all strange to me. Do you think Mookie Betts? Last question. Do you think Mookie Betts is going to end up in San Diego? Uh, no, no, I do not. Why? Why? Um, first off, I well, are you? Do you mean like before the season or, um, or just aha uh-huh. e- eventually? Aha! Uh-huh, see, okay, <laughs> <laughs> I tried to trick you on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Trickery. <laughs> because I have an opinion that is hinging on that very, very point. So what do you think? Is it 
Is it uh, you, okay? So is it going to happen before the season? Uh, no, I don't think he's going to be moved before the season. I don't think that's going to. I happen. agree. Do you think there's a chance he'll go to San Diego if this if the Padres are in contention by July? If they're if they're really looking good, if the Padres are in contention and the Red Sox are not in contention, yes, I could see that happening because they have assets to trade. They have. That uh, that highly touted by Manny Machado farm system, yeah. So, so they have they have some pieces they could move for him. Um, that's I mean everything has to be. I guess the whole situation has to be perfect for him to go to San Diego this season. Agreed. But it's possible. It is possible. It is possible. Not probable, but possible. Right. I'll give you that much. All right, let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to get into the Hall of Fame. No matter which ballpark you're at, you want to rep your team. Now you can with 9 Plus Us. Welcome to the Big City Series. With every design available in your team's colors, you can fit in with the home crowd or stand out on the road. Either way, we have the colors you crave. Shop the Big City Series and find designs that rep your favorite baseball podcast, cheer from the cheap seats, and much more. Shop the Big City Series only at 9plusus.com. Welcome back, baseball family. So let's get right into this. So this last week we had some pretty big events, or a pretty big event, come on, come up in baseball. We had the Hall of Fame voting. Yep. And I'll be honest, I love the Hall of Fame voting. I think it's a lot of fun. I like to see who gets in every year. Uh, used to, I didn't care. I didn't care. Two shakes about who got in the Hall of Fame. But now that it's guys that I've I kind of grew up watching and paying paying attention to, I actually really like it a lot. I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So this last week we had Larry Walker uh voted in with uh 76.6% of the vote. And we also had uh we also had Derek Jeter voted in and he was one vote away from being unanimous. He was at Ninety nine point seven percent. Okay, now that's been the topic of discussion this whole week. Okay, Derek Jeter not getting unanimous. Brig, as a Yankee fan, do you think this is it? Like, is is that a big deal that he wasn't unanimous? I mean, th- I think it depends on how you want to look at it. Um, mm-hmm. Because, like, my rational self says, man, but he's in the Hall of Fame. That's where he belongs. Mm-hmm. He deserves to be there, dilly dilly, and all that, right? Right. But at the same time, I'd rather lose by by ten runs than than by a single. You know what I mean? Then like, yeah, yeah. So so to to come that close to to true perfection, uh, and and not make it, not that he cares. I doubt he cares. You know, he's grateful to be there. At least that's what he's saying. But I think he said he was nervous. I don't know why you'd be nervous. It's not not whether or not you're going to get in. (laughs) It's not a question of whether or not. It's a question of whether or not he's going to be unanimous. And everybody knew that. Yeah. So, so for me, I I'm peeved, and I want to know who's the one guy or gal with an axe to grind. You know what I mean? Who's who's the one voter that said, you know what? No. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well, and I, I have an idea. I have an idea. I think they've narrowed it down to one of three guys. Um, and I think their names are uh, Larry, Moe, or Curly. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> How do I not know about this? <laughs> um, luckily, the Hall of Fame voters are able to remain anonymous. They can be their private ballots. If they choose yeah, to if, be if they private wanted to about be, it. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's a good decision because of situations like this that warrant some privacy, right? If you're going to be the only yeah, one yeah. that didn't vote for Derek Jeter, then I don't I, – I, it's upsetting. I don't think he cares. I don't think that's he all. cares either. He's got bigger fish to fry these days. <laughs> And all yeah. he cares about is whether you're in, because whether you got in by seventy six point six percent when you needed seventy five, or you got in by ninety nine point seven, you know, doesn't matter. It doesn't have your percentage next to your plaque. Nope. In the end, it doesn't matter because Babe Ruth wasn't unanimous. Cal, uh, Cal Ripken wasn't unanimous. Ken Griffey Jr. wasn't unanimous. Mickey Ted Williams Mantle. wasn't unanimous. Mickey Mantle wasn't unanimous. 
Yeah, he the was only guy twenty three who's votes. ever been. Yeah, there were seven guys who didn't vote for Babe Ruth. If you can believe that, I know, seven. I know. I s- <laughs> so <laughs> it's yeah, it, it's just funny. And and the thing too is like, if this had happened two years ago, there would be not a word about it, right? Right. Yep. But because Mariano Rivera was unanimous last year, people are like, oh, well, now there's been a precedent set. That's the, right. The barrier's been broken, if you will. That's exactly right. So now people are more like, more, more likely to be upset about somebody not being unanimous. And I'm just kind of like, eh. Yeah, fine. but of all the but, people... Okay, t- answer me now. This is I'm going to maybe burn some bridges here, but answer me this. <laughs> Would you have put Mo? unanimous over Derek Jeter. Like if you had to choose one guy to be unanimous, would it be Mo or would it be Jeter? Um I probably would put Mo over him. And part of it is because um like we've seen that have you seen that meme that's been going around lately with yeah. Mariano Rivera where it yeah, says with the cutter? Yeah. Yeah, no need to steal my signs, I'm throwing a cutter, but you still won't hit it. You're still yeah. You can steal that, it. You, I don't even care. We're not even going to show a sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And and that's why. That's why he he deserves to be unanimous. Well, and and who knows? Like, this is the thing too. Is you only have ten votes, right? Yeah. And I was actually thinking about this today. So that one writer, his his rationale, her or her rationale may have been, Jeter's going to get in whether I vote for him, vote for him or not. Right. There are 10 other guys on this ballot who I want to help get into the Hall of Fame. And under right? that logic, I fully support it. Yeah, and when it came to Mariano Rivera, I don't know if either there weren't 10 other guys to vote for or there was maybe some kind of question in people's mind, but um but I feel like that's why some guys don't get you like a lot of guys or nobody I guess has ever gotten unanimous because of that mentality. Yeah, that's a good point. I had, I had never thought about it that way, actually. So, and that that's why I just that's one big reason that I'm like fine with it and don't really care. So, huh. I guess my yeah. issue is if if one of those votes went to like Barry Bonds instead. Well, I'd and who upset. knows? Maybe maybe that person like maybe their agenda is specifically getting steroid guys votes. And and that's possible. Exactly. Maybe they did maybe ten votes for new... steroid guys. The new guard. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know, Derek Jeter has 3,465 hits in his major league career. That puts him at like sixth all time. Mm -hmm. Um, 2,747 games played, 11,195 at-bats, 544 doubles, 358 stolen bases, 2,595 singles, um, five gold glove awards at shortstop tied for the fifth most by shortstop in all of baseball history um, in 158 career, 158 career postseason games. The dude played in a full season worth of postseason games. He's he played in more postseason games than most guys will play in a year. Then most guys will play in a, in any game. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is he played more more postseason games than one guys will most guys will play in a, in a single year? Yeah, that's exactly so, right. That's postseason games. That is postseason games, mind you. Yeah, it's amazing. It it really is. Well, and did you mention the five World Series rings? Uh, no, I was getting to that. But yes. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, he, he's got one for the thumb. That's he's a big got deal. One, one for, for the, the thumb. thumb. Him and Jerome Bettis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> No, man, the dude is a legend. He's um, the only Yankee to be named captain since Donnie Baseball. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm getting effusive here and, and gushing because that's the kind of what I feel like you expect. I even wore my Baseball Together pinstripe shirt tonight <laughs> just to, nice. so we could talk about Derek Jeter. Um, yeah. This is my guy. This is the guy I grew up watching. This is the guy. Mm-hmm. When, when in Little League we got to choose jersey numbers, we all fought tooth and nail for number two. You know, oh, I, is... I told you the story about the one season I played for the Yankees. Yes. Yeah, I, I fought a kid just about physically so I could be so I could have number two. Of course. And I, I wasn't a Yankee fan. I wasn't a Jeter fan, but I still I was on the Yankees, so I had to have number two. I don't 
that's because he went to 14 all-star games, bro. <laughs> yeah, it is. And he it won is. rookie of the year and he's a five time silver slugger and he's a world series MVP and he's the all-star game MVP. That's right. Like, well, and, and, and that too is when that happened, that was 1998. Yeah. So he was in his third full season with the Yankees. That's right. And he'd already had that much of an impact on us. Yep. I'm just saying, man. He's uh he gets a bad rap. A lot of people think he's overrated and I think that's absolute bonkers. Well, we've had we've had that conversation already. Yeah. But <laughs> So let's what talk about a little Larry bit Walker? about Yeah, let's talk about Larry Walker. There we go. Um so he was a guy who didn't get votes for a long time because he played in Colorado, right? Like, like people don't want to vote for guys who played in Colorado because of the thin air and, um, right. And we, you know, like this week on Dan Lebitard, they were talking about that. And they said, what's a better advantage, steroids or Colorado? <laughs> you know, because balls fly. I just like, took a drink juicing. when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, and now everybody can see it. Yeah, yeah. everybody can see the reaction. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously was like, ugh. <laughs> but yeah, man. But no, I mean, I I feel like he was he was worth it or worthy. Uh, this is his last year on the ballot. I'm glad that he got in. Another guy who I grew up watching and cheering yeah. for, uh, for no particular reason, just because he was a name I recognized. I had his baseball cards. So I knew who he was. I knew who he played for, and I remember. I remember. Uh, you know, he played. He played for the Expos until uh, until 1994. Yeah, right. When the strike. And yeah. and I always I would always look on the back of cards and see where guys are from, where they grew up, whatever you know. In addition to all their stats. Yeah. And so I thought, oh, maybe that's why he plays for the Expos because he's from Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Yeah. I did not work, but whatever. No, that's that's awesome. So. <laughs> so Larry Walker uh, won an MVP award. He's a five-time All-Star, seven-time Gold Glove Award winner, three Silver Sluggers, and three batting titles. So he's no slouch. No, he's not. He's not a slouch. Uh, I mean, you look at – we have his baseball baseball reference page up right now, and yeah. it's nobody's as loaded as Jeter is. No. But his is pretty close. I don't think we'd say close. Well, I but, mean, you look at the, but his I'm talking about are the awards the, section. Oh, I'm talking yeah. Talking about the awards section. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cluttered over there. There's a lot going it's, on. It's cluttered. I w- I'm not even going to let you say it's close, but it's cluttered. I mean, you say whatever yeah. you want. You, I'm not going to let you say anything. <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it's a free country, Brig. I'm not going to agree with you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. But I mean, you talked about say. the gold gloves, the silver sluggers, right. uh, the, all the all-star games, and he has, you know, he has three top 10 MVP, MVP finishes. Yeah. That's respectable. It's totally respectable and the fact that he is his, this is his 10th year on the card, right on the ballot that mm-hmm. of course of course people are sitting around questioning whether or not he deserves to be in. I mean, it mm-hmm. took it not only did it take 10 years for people to recognize his talent, but uh in his contributions, but but it's been 10 years since we've had a chance to see him play and he's been on our mind. So, you know, I mean, this hopefully serves as a good reminder for people that Larry Walker deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. We're glad he's there. And uh, Brad, did you see which cap, which logo, if any, he has decided to wear on his plaque? Um, I didn't see. I would think it would probably be Colorado, since that's where he spent most of his career. Would you? Th- would you put money on it? No, because a big piece of me also hopes that actually that it's Montreal, just because I want to see that logo in the Hall of Fame. Oh man, don't we all? Yeah, <laughs> it's actually Colorado. He's chosen to wear Colorado's logo on his cap. Now, for those of you that don't know, this is a good little piece of information. When you're inducted into the Hall of Fame, when a player is inducted, they get to choose whether or not they're going to use a logo of the team they, any of the teams they played for. Mm-hmm. on their plaque on their bronze plaque in the hall of fame so and it's like a half bust thing we'll probably let's see if we can put a picture on the video so everybody gets an idea yeah, but, yeah i'll see if i can find one and put it on there um but they get to choose the logo that they want to af- affiliate themselves with for you know 
time immemorial. So mm-hmm. um, it's 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 always a little bit of a topic of conversation for franchisee guys um, or for uh, for guys that played the field rather, uh, like mm-hmm. like Larry did. You know, D- Derek Jeter, he's going to wear the New York Yankees logo because mm-hmm. he played in New York his whole life, his whole career. Um, Larry played for Montreal, Colorado, um, and St. Louis. So, you know, he's got he's moved around a little bit. But players can also opt to go without a team-affiliated logo on the cap on their plaque. Can you think of any off the top of your head who don't have a logo on their cap? You know, I think Roy Halladay did it a couple of years ago. Didn't isn't it was a posthumous? And I think that yeah, they he chose. was he was voted in posthumously. But the one who comes to mind for me immediately is Griffey. Did he go without one? Because his hat's backwards. Oh yeah, bro! Yeah. They went ahead and did it. They did went ahead they and did really? It. How yeah. did I not know this? <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, that's that's how they put him in. They put him in with his hat backwards. Uh, that's fantastic. That's yeah. That deserves a slow clap. That's <laughs> that's the way it should be. That honors his legacy. That tells the story. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. It's oh, great. Um, I just verified it. Roy Halladay, no logo on the cap. No logo. And I re- misremembered. Griffey does have a does have a Mariners one. I did remember seeing mock ups of him of him with his hat backwards. Ah, oh. that's what it was, man. So I have to I have to take all that back, all that. Yeah, praise, take that Brad. take that slow clap back, man. No, ah. I refuse. No. Griffey deserves they a slow done clap it anyway. They should have done they sh- it backwards. They should have, man. Did they even have that? As was that an afterthought? What putting it backwards? Yeah, or was it in the discussion? I remember seeing mock-ups of it backwards, and, I, and that's what I was picturing in my mind. Oh, I gotcha. Um, yeah, but I, uh, I was, yeah, I remember everybody's really hoping that they would actually do it, but they went ahead and put a Mariners logo on it. So I wonder if there was some, you know, standards of excellence problem with that. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably they're like, no, it's not. It's not the way we do things, yeah. you know. <laughs> And don't it's not how flip we do your things bat. in the baseball hall of fame. Mm, yeah. Yes. Yeah, don't flip your bat. Yeah, yeah, don't flip your bat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> don't thump your chest, go hit <laughs> jog around the bases like you've been there before. Even right. if it's your first home run. Act like you've been there before. That's right. Whether you have or haven't. Yeah. Yeah. So. So now the topic of conversation has shifted. The topic of conversation is so funny to me. And we'll get into this a little bit in a minute, but it's so funny to me that the the, the votes are, are released, the announcement is made, and then boom, within hours, everybody's like, "Who's up next year?" Yeah, it's I know. there's yep. no time, so we're gonna take a break and we're gonna participate in the conversation. <laughs> That's right. Hey, babe, I'm headed to concessions. Do you want me to grab you something? Yeah, anything, whatever you're getting. Okay, I saw a burger. I'll probably grab that. Mm, no, that doesn't sound good. Okay, I think there's barbecue, probably some nachos. Uh, I don't think I want either of those either. Um, but just get me anything. What do you want? Uh, I saw a hot dog earlier. Okay, I can do that. Well, no. Couples may quarrel, but baseball is for lovers. Shop the Lovers Collection at 9plusus.com. Welcome back, baseball family. As we said before the break, the conversation quickly becomes, after the Hall of Fame election voting is complete and we get our announcements, the conversation then comes to, why not this guy? And what about next year? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to get into what is, uh, what is, what are the voting looks like, kind of how it's, how it proceeds. And then let's talk about some of the names that come up when you think about Hall of Fame voting and some of the issues, perhaps, surrounding some of the names. So, Brad, you said earlier that everybody gets 10 votes. Every So, first of all, for those of you that don't know, the baseball writers um, of America are the ones that vote on the Hall of Fame ballots. Okay, They're the ones that get an opportunity to vote. And you can't have been inactive as a baseball writer for what is it a two years or something like that three years 
I I think it's two or three years. I can't remember for sure what it is. It used to be like five or longer or something, but but now it's they've cut it way down. So I think it's two or three years, and um and so what we're seeing is we're seeing this this kind of this migration happen. This old guard voter is falling away and no longer voting, and this new guard is kind of coming in with these new ideas and this this uh, this new mentality about who belongs and who doesn't. So I think that the 2021 vote is going to be very interesting. What do you think, Brad? I think it will be um, because there are, there are a lot of steroid guys on there now. Like yeah, a whole lot of steroid guys. And um, I'm curious if people are just going to, you know, because you can vote, like we said, you, you get 10 votes, but you don't have to vote for 10. You can vote for up to 10 is the way that works. Right. So I'm curious if there will be anybody who will vote for maybe one or two and then not go at all. Um, and one thing, I actually saw an article, the headline said um, that the weak incoming class will actually probably benefit the steroid guys because people want to use their votes. Yes. Right? Yes. And there could be some old guys who can, you know, maybe by then they'll be far enough removed from from steroids that um, they're going to go ahead and do it because Roger Clemens and Barry Bonds, that's going to be their ninth year on the ballot. And they're slowly creeping up. Yeah, this, this year they received uh, – Roger Clemens received 61% votes. Barry Bonds got 60.7%. Now, you have to earn 75% of the votes to be elected to the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Right. And this year, there were 397 voters. You know, it fluctuates from year to year. But this year, 397 voters. And a player has to be awarded 75% of the votes out of the 10 people you can vote for on your card. So... Mm-hmm. That's kind of the way this works, and I think this has been a banner year voting for Clemens and Bonds. Yeah, it has been, and I mean it's it's like I said, like most guys, most guys do creep up like they have, and I don't know if it's uh, one of those things where distance makes a heart grow fonder. You kind of romanticize what they did with the game, um, but I think so. And and one of the one of the arguments for both of those guys is that. Whenever it was they started juicing, it was likely in the second half of their careers that they were both Hall of Famers before. You know, that's that's one argument that I've heard for those guys. Of course. That yeah, if I you were to just take half of their career and say, okay, I'm assuming this is where they stopped, where they started juicing, but if I take everything before that, he's still a Hall of Famer. And so I think that's what's happening here. Yeah. Yeah, it's possible. Do you think it's... I mean, let's ask the question. Do you think it's right? Do you think Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, Sammy Sosa, you know, all these guys, do you think they deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? Here's the thing, okay? We've talked about how the Hall of Fame is a museum, right? Yes. It is, yes. Can you tell the story of baseball without steroid guys? Uh, No. That The answer to that question is no. And I think that's your answer right there. Mm. Like I, like I've said before, I don't want them in with everybody else because I don't want Barry Bonds sitting next to Ken Griffey Jr. I would prefer to have right. an asterisk wing or a steroid wing. Um, the attic. I think we that's talked your, about this it, last time. The attic. Yeah, that's right. The attic or the or the cellar. Yeah. yeah, where you have to you have to work to get to see these guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> with that, I think I think I fell in love with the slip and slide idea, but that's yeah. just me. That's um, right. But no, I feel like these guys are so ingrained, and especially the steroid steroid era itself is so ingrained in the story of baseball that you can't tell the story of baseball without these guys, and they kind of have to be there, unfortunately, in some in one aspect or another. Now, that's an interesting argument, and I don't know that it carries enough weight with some of these older voters. Okay. And that's that's where I think they're getting jammed up. I think the younger voters are saying the same thing, but I think mm-hmm. the older voters that are still hanging on uh, are are stonewalling hard, uh, specifically against those two names. Um, which brings me to why I think Andy Pettit stands a better chance, and I think Manny Ramirez stands a better chance because 
by the time they reach closer to that 60% range where we're seeing Bonds and Clemens, they'll have time on their card or on their candidacy, their eligibility will still have time. Right, but think about Manny Ramirez. He still has an 82-game, or what is it, a 162-game suspension to serve? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if he'll. I don't know if he'll get in because of that. If if guys will be like he was rampant enough and blatant enough with it that he's he doesn't deserve deserve to be in at all. But I think I think you're onto something with Andy Pettit. Mm-hmm. That he was beloved enough. He had a big enough role in those in that Yankees dynasty. The core. And four, he actually Brady. came out and apologized. Yes. You know, what, Roger Clemens and Barry Bonds de- continue to deny use, even though there's major suspicion and evidence surrounding them. Evidence with Bonds for sure. I don't know that we have. Do we have evidence with Clemens, or do we just have his trainer? His trainer talked about, um, talked about injecting him. And there's a whole thing when the whole thing came out where he called yeah. his trainer uh, Brian McNamee when he called him. Yeah. And he's like Brian. I just want the truth. And and he was kept saying, Roger, I'll go to jail for you. Why would he go to jail for him if he was innocent yeah. of it? <laughs> you know. And he kind of played that. I remember he played that recording. It was kind of like see and it's like well no that just brings more questions and is yeah. actually not a good look for you you're not helping so, yourself yeah yeah so there's that whole thing with roger clemens and that's really where the suspicion started to increase with him hmm. but here, here's the one guy for me though and he sits at the top of this list because he got the highest percent highest percentage of ballots this season or this year and that's kurt Schilling. yes Okay. Let's talk about Kurt Schilling. There's a lot to talk about with Kurt Schilling. I know. <laughs> so there's a lot of people who are, I don't even want to say like postulating or or uh, hypothesizing that the reason he's not in is because of his politics. I'm pretty sure that's why. Because with his, with his work on the field, there's no way you can keep that guy out. No way. Not a chance. So... Yeah, I I just I don't understand why people can't separate the two because yeah, he said a lot of things that people don't like. He's done a lot of weird things since he retired. But there are guys in the Hall of Fame who've done just that. Agreed. You know, who have said things that people don't like, have done a lot of weird things, but they're still oh, there. Yeah. And Kurt Schilling, man, with his bloody or ketchup sock, whatever that is. The bloody sock. He, the bloody sock needs to be in the Hall of Fame. I agree with you. I'm surprised he didn't make it in this year. I really am surprised. And maybe Me he too. got to 70% this year because of the person that didn't vote for Derek Jeter. I don't know. <laughs> but that's possible according to your you know, your theory, which I really like. Mm-hmm. So the, for those of you that don't know about Kurt Schilling, six-time All-Star, okay, three times been to the World Series. He won the World Series MVP. I think it was in 2001 when he beat the Yankees uh, when he was pitching for Arizona, right? Isn't that when uh-huh. he won the World yeah. Series MVP? Yeah, and I he's, think so. He, he's won an NLCS MVP as well. Um, we're talking about a guy whose war over his career, right, it wins above replacement, is 79.5. Yeah. This guy, that's, that's, a, that's a huge number. <laughs> we just talked about Buster Posey the other day. He's at 50. Or fifty three yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. There's, I mean, he, and he helped break the curse. I remember yes. specifically, um, when that the uh, the Red Sox signed him on my birthday in two thousand and four. Yeah. yeah, my eighteenth birthday, and I remember I was sitting there watching Sports Center with my mom. I think it was after it had to have been after school. And uh, cool mom. And I looked. What's that? Cool mom. <laughs> Oh yeah, I think she was in between piano lessons, but yeah, she'd watch Sports Center with me all that's the time, awesome. watch baseball. Yeah. Um, but I looked over and I said, "That's the thing, that's it. The Red Sox are getting over the hump this year." And did I called my really? shot. I said, "I did." I said, "The Red Sox are going to beat the Yankees in seven games and sweep the World Series." Oh, <laughs> of course, yeah. you know I can say that now. But that is a yeah. true story. That, that's that's <laughs> what I said. I didn't think they. I still didn't think they'd come back from three down. But but yeah, Nobody I called did. my shot right there. Dang. That's amazing, man. So, so. That's cool. But yeah, I, I knew he was the missing piece for the Red Sox that year, and and uh, sure enough, and it took took the bloody sock game. Yeah, man. Let's come back and do it. So we talked about Roger Clemens, Barry Bonds, Kurt Schilling, 
Yeah. Uh, is there anybody else you see on this list uh, who deserves to be in, you think might get in, um, is a little questionable for you? Um. Okay, I've given this a lot of thought. I think... Man, this this is really hard because I think Andrew Jones is a really impressive guy in his career. And even though he played a short career, I think he was what? Um it wasn't he it was hurt all the time. He's got a bunch of strings of games where he was seventy five games, eighty games, you know, stuff like that at the certainly at the end of his career. But look at this. Andrew Jones, five time all star. Okay, 10 times, 10 gold gloves. That's oh, yeah. amazing. Okay, yeah. Silver Slugger and and uh I think he's underrated. I think Andrew Jones is underrated. He's got a career war 62.8. He's got 152 stolen bases. It's but his batting average is at 254 career. I think that's one of the things bringing him down. But that doesn't take yeah. into consideration his defensive production he has 10 gold gloves yeah well and and that batting average is really going to hurt him for the time that he played because then at that point the standard was 300 right absolutely i mean like like granted you were a good hitter but you had to hit 300 to be a good hitter now 254 that's not too bad it's yeah well certainly not in 2019 (laughs) yeah yeah exactly yeah so I, i agree with you he's an underrated guy do you see anybody else on there uh well I see a couple other guys on there but I want to know what you think what are you leading at oh I'm I'm just curious like my big one is Omar Vizquel he got fifty two point six percent of the vote this time yeah uh, I think he deserves to be and you know he's another guy he didn't quite hit three hundred he hit two seventy two but yeah. defensively what he did for the game uh what he did with Roberto Alomar when they played for the Indians yeah no doubt there was not a better middle infield and I can't I don't know if I can think of one since. Yeah, that was better than those guys because they were phenomenal. They were fantastic. Um, I learned how to double wa- uh, turn a double play by watching those guys. Totally. Uh, well, at least I thought I did, but <laughs> yeah, you know, right, right, right. You know how it is as a kid. <laughs> you knew what you it looked like. Stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I knew it. I I knew what I was watching, and it was fantastic. Yeah. Um, another guy for me is Todd Helton. I was I mean, going to say three sixteen average, um, and what he did for Colorado, and and I think that Larry Walker getting in is going to remove some of that Colorado stigma. I was just you know? gonna say that. Yep. Yeah, and and you can look at you can look at those guys' home and road splits too, and you can see that Helton was was productive at home and on the road. Right. Exactly. That he would that he was a legitimately great player. He's got a long way to go though. He's he's only in, this is going to be his third year, and next year will be, and he got twenty nine point two percent of the vote this year. Okay. So he's got a ways, but like I said, I think Larry Walker will help with that. I think so. I think you're right. Now, uh, an interesting statistic. Uh, that I thought was interest, interesting, <laughs> interesting to statistic that I thought <laughs> was interesting. interesting you enough. back off. Um, <laughs> how many Colorado Rockies are in the Hall of Fame, Brad? Um, is Larry Walker the first one? He's the first one. Uh, that's what I thought. He's the yeah, first one. Like, yeah, like they talk about that stigma of playing in Colorado. What's yeah. the better advantage, playing in Colorado or using steroids? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. So that that's interesting. By the way, they're not the only team with only one guy in the hall. Oh, man. Um, the Mariners only had one until last year. I know that. Yep. I'm, I'm going to verify Martinez this. Is, I'm going to verify it right now. the second one. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Do the D-backs have anybody? I'm looking in the Hall of Fame. Um, they have. Let's they, see. They have one. They have one. Okay. Ran, Randy Johnson. Oh, Randy Johnson went in as a D-back. That's right. Yep, he went in as a D-back. Yeah, he would because he won a World Series there, so that's cool. I, yeah. Two thousand one. Forgive him for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who else? Let's see. Um. I can't think of any. Uh, how many do the Padres only have one? Um, let me look. I think they have more than one. They have three, including Tony Gwynn. Duh. Yeah, yeah. Tony Gwynn was the one I was thinking of. I I wasn't sure about any. Oh, duh. Trevor Hoffman and Dave Winfield. 
Yes, that's right. I and I forget that Dave Winfield would have gone in as a Padre. I do too. That's exactly how I feel. Okay, so let me tell you the other ones, the other teams with only one representative are uh Anaheim. I guess, you know, whatever they're calling themselves these days. But the Angels <laughs> The Angels. <laughs> the Angels has Vlad Guerrero. Vlad, yeah. Um, and then the Blue Jays. Roberto Alomar. Uh, okay. Went in as a Blue Jay. And then okay. um, the Kansas City Royals. George Brett. George Brett. You got yeah. it. You the man, yeah. Brad. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> George Brett and his yeah. and his pine tar his bat. Pine tar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. Yeah, that's right. Oh, man. Yeah, that bat better be in the Hall of Fame. It should be. I don't know if it is, honestly. <laughs> Uh, that's just what it, I know George Brett for, uh, other than you know his amazing <laughs> career. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I heard about George Be- George Brett growing up because he was my mom's favorite favorite player. She grew up in the Kansas City or lived in the Kansas City area for a while. Oh, and, nice. Uh, watch watch Royals games, and that was her favorite player for a long time. Very cool. So that, that's how I know who George Brett is. But, yeah, infamous. The guy's that's infamous. Right. That's if, right. If you guys don't know. Maybe we should find the clip and put it on the video because if you don't know, but for those of you listening on the podcast, you got to watch the clip where George Brett gets hemmed up for <laughs> pine tar on his bat. It's like, and he loses his mind. It's the best. It's, it's so one of the best flip outs in all of baseball history. <laughs> it is, it is, it, it takes Bobby Cox to the line, right? It's, he's oh. like, no, no, no watch me (laughs) well and another funny thing about that game is that people don't talk about is it was suspended so they went to play that game later yeah and he wasn't in the game because he'd been ejected yeah so they had to go finish what was like an inning or two or something like that he wasn't in the game (laughs) after that it's like two months later he's still ejected yeah (laughs) from that game because they had to finish that game yeah yeah Yeah. so funny so funny it is funny (laughs) baseball's so funny man it, there's a lot of funny stuff, it's just in weird, sports in general, but especially baseball. Weird cultural, funny things. But baseball family, let us know what you think. Let us know what you think about next year's upcoming ballot. Are you as outraged as Brig is that Derek Jeter didn't uh, didn't get unanimously voted into the Hall of Fame? If you are, let us know. If you're not, let us know. Let us know why or why not, uh, because that's it's a fun conversation to have. I feel like it but is. But let fun. us know what you think about about next year's ballot as well. And remember, you can always interact with us on on uh, baseballtogether.com, and uh, we're going to have more of a YouTube presence now, obviously with the videos, so that'll oh, be yeah. fantastic. You can comment there, let us know what you think, and uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun with this, um, and just let us know what you think about, about all that stuff. Don't forget to jump on the shop. It's shop.9plusus.com, and uh, you can check out the, these are the official Baseball Together podcast t-shirts we got the logo on a t-shirt and uh we got them on some hoodies some sweatshirts with no hood if you're into that they, we got that and we have them in all the team colors so if you got some you know you can go find it you just go on the shop and search for your team city so if you know texas fans in arlington you got your uh, you got your twins fans you just type in minnesota you can find whatever you want um, in your team's very own colors and more on the shop that's right, and we mentioned BaseballTogether.com. Be sure to check that out. That's our blog. You can listen to the podcast. You can watch the podcast on there now as well because we're going to be uploading the videos to the site. Um, but you can also read about baseball. Brig recently put an article up there about what he would have done to the Astros if he was the commissioner. So you can go read that, check that out. And also, don't forget to like, subscribe, rate, review the podcast. Let us know what you think. Tell your friends and baseball family. We will catch you next week.